This is Startup to Storefront. On Thursday, February 24th, Russian military forces crossed the border into Ukraine and ended a peace that had existed in Europe since World War II. The war in Ukraine has, among many other tragedies, created a massive humanitarian crisis with the millions and millions of Ukrainian citizens that have fled the country in search of safety. For those that have stayed, Daily life has been completely upended and their future thrown into uncertainty. But there are still plenty of Ukrainians trying to carve out a living and maintain a sense of normalcy amidst the invasion. Our guest today is Alyona Misko, founder of Fuel Finance, a cloud-based financial service based in Ukraine. Alyona has relocated her headquarters from Kyiv to Lviv in order to avoid the worst of the assault, but she still finds herself being woken up to the sounds of air raid sirens. So listen in to this special episode as we cover everything from what it's like to run a company in a country at war, the decision to stay in Ukraine versus fleeing, and her plans for both the short term and long term as the war drags on. Now, on to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Yana from Fuel Finance. Thanks for joining all the way from Ukraine. For people who don't know, what does your company do? Yeah, so we are like a cloud-based financial department for startups. So we do everything like financial planning, call reporting, union economics, and simply help all founders with their finance. And what made you want to start the company? Like what problem did you see or maybe a bunch of founders that you knew just kept messing this up? And so you were like, there's got to be a better way to do this. I have been like a CFO for more than eight years. So I always saw this problem of managing finance and I always saw how it's complicated for all founders and they simply don't want to do it. And even when you start like your business, you don't want to manage your finance. So you want to do everything, but not finance. So that's why I always saw this problem and uh, really problem of very old dates. I think even non-glamorous really finance. And that's why I think that this part should be changed uh, a lot, like during next years. And for the beginning of your company, are you only targeting, like, who is your ideal customer? Is it SaaS companies that you're helping the most? Is it companies that have a product or somebody that just has like an API so that way you can just plug into their sales data? Yeah, we usually like our product is ideal for early stage startups, like seed Aaron startups. And we now have product for e-commerce, SaaS, and services. So only three business models. Okay. Can you give me something that you have found interesting throughout this problem? Maybe something that's easier, like it's easier to connect to the the banks than you would have thought? Is it harder? What are some of the challenges that, that you thought were like impossible that you're realizing are super simple? I think first that uh, I found like when we started uh, our product and I see what like main value of this product is uh, like not getting all these reports and do it manually and everything like that. So uh, main value is that all founders, they simply get all insights already in the way they need it and ex- exactly for their business model and for their stage of development. So that's why like I think our product is very cool for all founders because like you don't need to dive into all these details how this financial reporting made and what figures i should now see here what decisions i should make from this data so you simply get everything already in the way like a ready product from finance and you simply like can use it for your decisions do they share this dashboard with their investors i'm just thinking about it like there are some cases where a startup is what they call default dead, right? And yeah, I think your dashboard will show, would show them that. But if I'm a little bit of a crazy founder, I'm gonna go, no, 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 we're choosing growth at the moment. And this is a dumb concept, when in reality, they could literally be dead. So how does, <laughs> I don't like, I think about it like, while I understand your customer is a startup or a founder, at the same time, it could probably also be the investor group as a way of managing, you know, their their portfolio. Yeah, for investors, like our product is very <laughs> is also cool because all companies like with which we work and their investors they really receive all these dashboards and all information, and they really like it. And I know that uh, 
uh, founders, they build more trust relationships with their investors using uh, exactly our products. So yeah, and even like uh, I also already have like uh, experience of easier funding with uh, all our data, which is provided in our product. Interesting. And does it do anything like, does it automate, can you input like a cap table? And then there's other features like that, like maybe automating K1s or like allocations. Uh, yeah, cap table also and uh, unit economics also. So, and uh, we also have like this plan fact analysis of unit economics and also like planning of your cash flow, like analysis of your plan fact of cash flow, burn rate control. So everything like you need in order to understand what you should do with your business based on data. It feels more like a VC tool, to be honest. Like the more I think about it, the more I talk to you, the more I just think about it like as an investor, it would be good for me to have that so I can even guide the founder or make them aware of things that they, they might not see. Yeah, it's exactly uh, exactly this way. All right, so when did you first start the company? Two years and a half. Two years and a half ago. So, and you've so always, 2019? Yeah. 2019. Yeah. And you've always yeah, been in before Ukraine? Before COVID. Before COVID. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, I saw somewhere on your, your portfolio, your website, that your focus has been generating more US leads and business. Where was your business primarily focused before this, and, and how has that shift been since then? First, uh, first, like when we only started two years, two years and a half ago, we were focused on Ukrainian market. But already, I think after the one year, after the first year, we already started to focus on other countries, on European countries. And already, like last year, we mostly focused focused on U.S. countries. So, like when the war started, like we were not focused on the Russian market at all. So, it was obvious question for us, like after 2014. So, uh, Ukrainian and mostly U.S. last year. Prior to all of this, what was like the the Ukrainian entrepreneurship scene like? Was it booming? Was it healthy? Were there a lot of entrepreneurs, or would you say? You know, not not really. Like you're kind of a crazy person there. I think that all entrepreneurs now in Ukraine are crazy, uh, especially like startup founders. So I even don't imagine. But all my like friends, all my friends founders, startup founders, they really even grow now. So they volunteer, they help others, they donate to military forces, they relocate their teams and at the same time they they somehow making their business grow so it's uh, something very crazy now i think not only me but all founders that is crazy i mean are you are you worried like do you do you sleep at night is there a sense of panic or is it just you're good like you're just focused so focused on the task ahead of you uh, last two nights, uh, I, I hadn't a good sleep because we have many Syrians here. Like the last several nights, you asked about sleeping. And uh, I should say, that, yeah, no, last night we uh, had bad sleep because we have much Syrian, many Syrians now. Uh, and uh, especially uh, during last uh, two days at night. So <laughs> that's why it's a little bit crazy when you work like till night and uh, after that early in the morning and like at 5 a.m. or something like that, they start sirens. So yeah, it's a little bit complicated last days. What happens when the sirens go off? Do you guys have to go somewhere or is it just like watch out? There might be some, <sighs> yeah. some attack. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, like, at night, we simply, like, uh, wake up and try to go simply in more safe place in, in the flat. So like, not not near windows. Are they targeting Western Ukraine right now? Because I know that the war has shifted to largely Eastern Ukraine with the offensive in Donbass. And I, I know that, for the most part, they've pulled out of Kiev and, and everything uh, west of there. But like, have there been strikes near you? Yeah, so uh, they started to focus also on Western Ukraine. So uh, it's like, uh, maybe you already heard, but yesterday, five bombs were already in Lviv. And even like eight people died. So uh, we understand that like Russians, uh, they have a very crazy idea. Uh, now to win this war till uh, 9th May 
and ninth May it's like the day of victory in the Second uh, World War. And the second situation that uh, we have like also holiday on uh, Sunday, it's like Easter holiday. Yes. And uh, they also like ha- have uh, now, all Russians have another goal to make everything before this day. I, we don't know why, but that's why this week, and uh, we think that several next weeks, they will be harder than previous. Now, as far as like the workforce in Ukraine goes right now, I know that men 18 to 60 years old are not allowed to leave the country. Are they being drafted into the military? Like all of the, the men who work for fuel finance, are they being charged to take up the fight and join the military? Or are people still able to kind of conduct business as best they can. Now, uh, like, uh, joining military forces, it usually depends uh, of your willingness to do it. So we have one team member in field who decided to join military forces, but we don't have, like, this situation when everyone, like, should uh, join military forces. No, they, first of all, they take people with experience, and uh, only after that, uh, so we have this several several stages of mobilization and that's why now it's not the, that situation so all people who can work they simply work now and we also have like IT army in Ukraine and uh, that's why all like IT people they simply join this army and they do like their best with uh, in this part you know have you ever considered fleeing the country for now because i'd have to imagine that you know running a business is is its own challenge and then you add in a war on top of that it makes it damn near impossible and you know if you were to go to another country in europe or or wherever i would think it would be a little bit easier has that ever crossed your mind oh uh, yes yeah, so i i had the thoughts and uh, i also like all time analyze all risks uh, and i also understand that uh, western ukraine so now is like safe a little bit safe place but maybe it will not like in the nearest time so we don't know what to expect and uh, that's why yeah i analyze the situation uh, but uh, now i have now the strategy so i can work here and i still stay productive so I work like, uh, I don't know, 14, 17 hours now per day and everything like yeah, is okay and I can work. So I have here like working and uh, we have here also a community of other entrepreneurs like from uh, Kiev. Uh, so till the time I can like stay here and work and be productive, I will stay here. Uh, if I start to understand that it's impossible. So I will relocate because I believe uh, I will be like more efficient with laptop. And how about as far as like your business, I'm sure that internet connection is of, of a vital importance. And yeah. I, I, I had heard uh, in, in you know weeks prior that Elon Musk's Starlink was very beneficial in, in being sent over there and helping people to stay connected. Have you had any kind of interaction with that or like how is your internet and how are you able to like, are there outages like when, when bombs strike? You know, you simply now ask this question and I saw uh, the message <laughs> on my, uh, on my laptop, your internet connection is not okay. <laughs> so it's that's very that's funny. exactly why. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like internet connection is okay. And yeah, in Western Ukraine, we don't have like Sterling, but no, but some of my friends who are in IT army and in Western Ukraine, they have Sterling. So, <laughs> but uh, mostly uh, Sterling now is used or for military forces or for IT army. But yes, in all other regions, everything is okay. So uh, with internet connections, we have now problems in Western Ukraine and in somehow in uh, also in uh, central Ukraine, but I also know that Sterling really helps because my friend who is now at military forces, he like wrote me and uh, like several days ago and we chat with him and he said that, yes, it's like started to be possible because uh, they already have Sterling, but before that, like it wasn't connection with him like during the week. And how do you go about planning for the future with so much uncertainty? I mean, I know that you can probably have a business plan for yourself, but 
how do you bake in the sort of flexibility that's required for your business going forward? And, and are you thinking like one month, two months, a year down the line, or is it just day by day? Yeah, so we have like short time planning, uh, short time planning. First of all, we are really very data-driven business. So we used our product also for to manage our business. So we are really addicted guys according to planning. So <laughs> we have like weekly plans, monthly plans, quarter different plans uh, about everything. So about cash flow, revenue, lead generation, expenses. But also like in this situation, I think like first month, we had very short time planning. So we really planned for weeks, maybe for months, one month, but we like didn't have this planning for the next like several months even. But now we already like during this last, I think, three weeks, we started to think more in strategic way. So we understand that yeah, war war is going on and uh, we don't know how long it will be. And uh, maybe it will be like till the end of the year and we still need to uh, like have all our strategic goals because like uh, one week before the war we had a um, strategic session uh, for the next year and we already had all our ideas and plans for this year and now we try to think also in uh, like more strategic way because without it we simply uh, can't create a good product and make everything for it are you raising capital at the moment also like are you taking investor meetings yeah, we like we are preparing to start it like in nearest weeks. So and and is it mostly is it mostly Silicon Valley, San Francisco investors, or like yeah, mostly yeah, yeah. stateside? I can't imagine. I just can't imagine having this conversation with you where it's like, oh, okay, we're going to talk about raising capital while you're in the middle of a war, and hopefully everything works out. I mean, I would imagine like an investor would just say, just move, like come to America or like get, go to, Pol- I don't know, go to your closest European ally and seek refuge. Does the part of you feel crazy? Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> I think we're really crazy. And, oh, uh, man. But you know, like life is going on and business also should grow. And uh, our market, really our market is growing and it started to be trending from previous years. So it's like high time to do like what we planned. And um, I think it's like better situation for us because we are break even. So it's not like the situation as usual startups have about so we need fundraise or we will die. Yeah. So uh, we are like break even and even we have reserves from our profit, like from previous year. So we have another situation, but uh, we simply want to grow faster now. And that's why yeah, we want to try make it real. But we also understand craziness of this uh, situation. So we'll see how it will be. It's very admirable. It's almost in some way like you're able to focus. Maybe it's your refuge. Maybe it's the only thing in your life you can control. It's your business. Yeah. And so in some way that's therapeutic um, because everything else around you is so unknown. Yeah, for sure. I think I feel exactly like that. So that's why it's like (laughs) best therapy now to work. Well, tell us about what's, where do you see your business in a year's time? Like what, what new products are you working on? What are other things you guys are adding to your dashboard? What is that? What does the roadmap look like? First of all, like we want to scale uh, on the US market and grow faster with our clients. So we still automate. So we have like our strategy about our product. So we want to like, we now combine software with financial managers and we also like uh, have a strategy how we want uh, this product should look like in the nearest month. So it's like MVP now. Yeah, it's working. It's used by clients, but we have much work to be uh, improved there. And so we still working on design on parts like product part with engineers. So automations, also connections with different third parties. So we do it now, everything uh, to improve our product and make it better and faster for our clients. So, uh, yeah, we have like many plans according to that, but we also believe that our like huge idea, we want to transform this uh, very old financial sphere with like some art of QuickBooks, XLS Docs and uh, hired financial managers. And uh, that's why we believe we can simply replace 
huge parts of many of work of all financial managers or founders with our product. How much do you guys sell your product for today? Uh, we now have like 20 clients, which paying uh, with subscription basis, but our price is starting from $1,000 per month. So uh, like we have not basic sub subscription, like QuickBooks is $40 per month. We have another subscription. It would be great if you guys could get rid of QuickBooks. I never liked it. It's pretty antiquated, very annoying. The invoicing sucks. Yeah, yeah. I think many, many founders uh, also think the same, especially when you need to set up these QuickBooks. Yeah, you got to hire a firm and then you just have to hope that they do it right, but it's really annoying. Any desire yeah. to make a better QuickBooks? <laughs> uh, now we simply like take information from QuickBooks, but we also can take information from banking accounts, not only QuickBooks. So that's why we now analyze the situation because many companies, is, they use simply QuickBooks. And now we simply connect it with QuickBooks, but we also have like to analyze if we can replace, or maybe I think our main part and our main value, I think not in reports that make usually QuickBooks, so mainly in planning, dashboards, unit economics, insights. So that's why we, we maybe will simply like use QuickBooks as we do it now. You know, with the entire world's eyes on Ukraine, probably for the first time in, in recent memory, you know, there, there's a lot of support being given to refugee aid and the Red Cross and other nonprofit organizations. And I know that you set up a, a help page for Ukrainian businesses. Have you seen from your end an outpouring of support for those businesses? Have, has that translated into actual dollars? Uh, yeah, it's translated uh, in actual dollars. And we even already know, like, we have here different ratings who donate more and uh, from countries and from organizations and to whom uh, we transfer these donations. So, yeah, we understand it. But I should say that it's even not enough. So. We already talked about money that were donated to Ukraine from different countries and from different people and from different organizations, I think already in billions of dollars. But it's not enough because like war, I think, is very expensive. And uh, Ukrainian economy is also not in a good fit. So we have like drop in GDP. And uh, that's why I think uh, recovery will be very long. So when it comes to like, you're in finance to some extent. I think you're probably seeing it in real time that the future of finance is moving more to like a digital asset like crypto. How do you view your platform playing a role in that as, you know, this new wave of financial technology, both from your side, but also literally from, I mean, people are seeing it in real time where if you're in Russia, you cannot give money to your friend. Like it is impossible to send money, Yeah. Uh, you know? And so how do you view like crypto's role in the future of your country, but also in the future of your company? First of all, crypto's role is really huge because from start of this war, we have crypto accounts and money that were donated to like crypto. I think they now completely we talk about the amount which are like 30 percent from all donations so it's really a huge amount and that's why we also understand and uh, now it's something unusual what is going on in ukraine according to cryptocurrency because we already have not only like one organization we have several types of organizations where you can donate in crypto even to ministry of digital transformation so even our ministry already have cryptocurrency accounts for donations. So, and uh, we also see this transformations in our country according to legal parts for cryptocurrency. It's already changes. And so now I see that we have many, many changes uh, according payments and uh, crypto in Ukraine. And I think it also can be a boost to this industry in the nearest uh, years because if we have such changes during the war, and I think they are very fast, I think that other countries, they also like will take uh, this experience. Yeah. And when it, when it comes to different cryptocurrencies, you know, we know like Ethereum, for example, can have gas fees up to two, three hundred dollars, which makes it not very viable when it comes to scaling, because, you know, your average person is going to think that's too high. 
Bitcoin is slow also. You know, in my head, it seems like you guys probably are feeling this or you're seeing it more than most people where people here in America right now are seeing it when they buy an NFT. Uh, you're seeing it in real time when you're trying to trade assets. And so have you found a cryptocurrency that that is working better than the others or is it just based on what's popular in the moment? I think that uh, it's based mostly on what is popular now. But when I think about this market, I simply think like about it like usual, like when we talk about usual money is like the source of exchange. But this source like usual money, the source of exchange is controlled yeah, by national banks in different countries. And uh, now when I think about this cryptocurrency market, I more believe in cryptocurrency, not like in way of investment. Uh, I mostly believe it's like the new way of changes between people. So because it's not controlled by some national banks. And that's why I think it's only the start of this new way of how all currencies can be changed in the nearest future. So that's why I think more in that way than like in type of investment. Totally agree. Well, any, anything else you want to share with us about your company or about your current situation? I think, yeah, I want to share like also uh, our main idea that we tried to share with our friends who created a platform which is named spendwithukraine.com. It's a platform uh, about all Ukrainian cool businesses who still work and they make cool world known products. And they have like all information and stories about these companies. And I should say that also everyone can support Ukraine, not only donating like to our organization, but, which is also important, but also know more about these companies and uh, really like spend with Ukrainian companies. We'll make sure to put a lot of information out about yeah. that. I want to thank you. Thank you for sharing your story and for telling, you know, I know it's late where you are. I can't imagine Honestly, I, I, a part of me thinks it's crazy, but I do understand the tunnel focus of it. And I think that's, it's healthy, right? It's like, it could be way yeah. worse. And so, I, you know, it's, I'm glad you have something to focus on, something that keeps your energy. Absolutely. And we're certainly rooting for you. Channeling it towards something positive. Yeah. Yeah. It's like very important now. Yeah. Simply to have usual life sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. More than ever. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you much so for making much. the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. That was our conversation with Alyona of Fuel Finance. I also want to give a shout out to our listeners in Ukraine. We've been charting in Ukraine for over a month now, and we want you to know that we stand in solidarity with you. For everyone interested in how you can show your support, check out the website spendwithukraine.com. It has a list of companies in just about every sector who are operating out of Ukraine. And while I still have your attention, if you're not subscribed already, you should seriously consider doing so. And if you are, then go ahead and leave a review. It's a great way to help out the podcast. We are at Startup Storefront on every social media platform except for Twitter, where you can find us at STS Podcast LA. Our team consists of Diego Torres Palma, Natalia Capellini, Lexi Jameson, Owen Capellini, and me, Nick Conrad. Our music is by Double Touch. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.